Hi everyone, my name is George and welcome to the Anime Grove. Today we're watching Onyx Equinox episode 4. Now, um, during previous episodes a few of you gave me a, a few tips on how to understand and how to find more information about all of the pre-Hispanic Mesoamerican mythologies and a bit about those cultures. So uh, I followed a link that one user that, that one user sent me. Uh, I think the name is Rokus or pronounced somehow similar uh, to Rokus. In any case, it was a link to a Crunchyroll official video on um, extras on Onyx Equinox that would give us a fair and better understanding of most of the subjects treated in Onyx Equinox. Uh, I think the, the two most important things or maybe the two biggest things I got from the video were uh, the differences, uh, the regional and cultural differences between the Olmecans, the Mayans and the uh, Aztecans, Aztecs, sorry. And I learned also a bit about their mythology. I learned that uh, Quetzalcoatl, who I already knew and happened to be uh, as I said, a representative of a feathered snake or something similar, uh, is actually Tezcatlipoca's brother that I didn't know. And they kind of uh, are opposites, one to eat the other, and they kind of represent light and darkness, but not in the good and evil sense, but more, in a, more like in a transcendental objective light and darkness point of view. So, uh, also the last thing I learned was The last thing that I learned was uh, the name of the god that seemed to be summoned or freed during episode 1. His name is uh, Mectan. The last thing that I learned was uh, the name of the god that seemed to be summoned or freed during episode 1. His name is Mictlantecutli. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I didn't want to I don't want to butcher the names, but I didn't want to go to the the part of the video that I was referring before that um, taught how to pronounce the different names of the main characters because I actually didn't want to spoil myself further or any further on uh, who would be a part of the team or maybe a secret enemy. You know, I don't want to spoil anything. so. I don't want to get spoiled on anything, so that's why I skipped the pronunciation part of the video. Uh, in any case, just let me know if I'm butchering the pronunciation. Uh, but Mictlantecutli uh, is the god that was freed on episode 1, and I learned that 
uh, our idea of the underworld um, as the similar to the Hades in Greek mythology is mixed land, I think, would, which would be, as I say, um, a parallel to the Greek Hades. Not quite the same, but up to a certain degree it is. So that's basically everything I can remember now that I learned on the show. Not on the show, sorry, on the video that was sent to me. In any case, uh, let's just get into it. I, uh, last episode, the twin, the soccer playing twins joined us. I can't remember their names, but at least I now know that our main character is called Isel. Um, I guess now we'll get to the second underworld gate, or maybe we still have a few more episodes before we get to the next one. I just don't know if it's going to be a one season show or maybe there will be several seasons. Maybe a few of the gates will close during each season. Zero idea. In any case, this is not a market substitute. So grab your legal copy and watch it along with me. Remember to like, comment and subscribe for more content in this channel. And now, without any further ado, let's just get into it. Onyx Equinox, episode 4. Oh, come on, man. We just started and I'm already getting this kind of vibes. I mean, I guess they have to eat, but I wasn't expecting to see the rabbit get killed instantly. But who is this? I don't think we've met her. She seems really cool. Did she just catch a fish with her mouth? She's like a feral animal. I love the twins. Yo, that's way cooler. But isn't that a tale of where they are? Yeah. Yo, is that like a guardian of a gate? Yo, is this Miklante Kutli? I said it at the same time as Yautl said. That's a fucking nuke, so... So, if I'm getting it right, Miklantekutli has just appeared out of nowhere in the city that they just left, uh, where the Isel's father was, and uh, he just nuked it by appearing. That's what I gather. I hope everything, everyone's fine. I think Isel's father was redeeming himself. He was in the path to become a better man and maybe a better father to Isel, even if he was willing to forgive him. But I think he might be dead now. And that sucks because then there's no room for more character development. They're worried too. I doubt he's alive though. Like, he must be. He cannot be an incredible man, but still, he's just a man. Yo, even this guy, the cooler one of the twins, is still being kind of mean. Not mean, but I get that he's probably feeling really desperate. Uh, he just saw, as he says, uh, the city. I thought he had been born in that city, but they must have uh, moved to that city when they were young. But as I said, mm, they are probably really worried or even mad that their city got destroyed. 
Therefore, I get that they don't really want to talk to Isel right now, nor complete the tasks that Isel was supposed to complete. Is now Isel going to face the Huntress? She reminds me a bit of um, Hanni, I think is the correct pronunciation, uh, the Huntress in the Octopath Traveler game. There she is, the Huntress. The Huntress was being hunted. Yo! She's so agile! I'm shocked Jotl hasn't already mauled her. Why is she attacking Isel? Well, she wasn't. Actually, she was just observing and then Jotl attacked, so actually. She hasn't even attacked them yet. Jania. Um, I wonder, this is something I just thought, but... Um, uh, do people in this world... Uh, you know what I mean, this world is our world, but with an... Uh, magical element, a fantastic element, but still, um, are they aware of the existence of the God's messengers? For example, do people know Yautl? Because I'm completely sure that they do know Quetzalcoatl, they know Tezcatlipoca, they probably know Mitlantecutli, I think. Um, but as I said, do they know Yautl? Oh, do they know of him? I mean, have they heard of uh, Tezcatlipoc Tezcatlipoca's champion? Or is it a something completely new for them? So what I mean is, when they see this kind of giant jaguar that can speak, do they think of Yautl? Or do they just think they're tripping balls? Yo! This girl is pretty strong. Jania, right? They don't have time. It's uh, like an old time GPS, that ball. Why is that? Why can't he enter? Ah, oh, I see. This is anti god obsidian. Olmec Obsidian. Is it Olmec or Olmecan? Now that I think of it, I think I've heard both, but why are there so many iguanas? Were his eyes glowing because of the curse? That's a cool detail. Right, now they glow again. He's summoning Quetzalcoatl, right? Is this... Wait, is this Quetzalcoatl true form? That's so cool, it looked incredible. I think I've got a thumbnail already. Yeah, this is Quetzalcoatl. He's really... Cool. They're really cool. Uh, I'm trying to say they, uh, so I don't, you know, I'm trying to use uh, they instead of assuming people or gods genders, um, but um, they seem really cool because they have like a extremely long uh, feather crown, kind of, and his whole body is a human body, but it lacks the skin in most of the body and it even lacks muscle in some parts as just like the arms and the legs and the feet so it's a, a pretty interesting choice 
combination of choices, aesthetic choices, but I wonder if this is an ancient depiction of Quetzalcoatl and they just based the character on it for the show, or this is just a, a model created for the show and there's actually no depiction of Quetzalcoatl in this uh, body. I wonder, so as always, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate how much, how much um, interaction I'm having with you guys. I love how much you comment, especially in this show, and I'm so glad that I'm getting these comments because it means a lot to me. It symbolizes the progression in my channel. And so yeah, thank you so much to everyone that comments in my videos and I hope to see many more comments in the future. Thank you so much, I really mean it. Was uh, Quetzalcoatl reforming right now? It looked like he was gaining more flesh. That's weird. I didn't hear, I didn't catch what Yotl said, let me rehear it. These are the children of their second creation, is what I'm getting. So, they said they had wiped humanity, or I guess things close to humanity, uh, four times before this fifth equinox, or equinox, is going to happen. And uh, this must be what's left of the second uh, generation of humans, the second batch of humans. Okay. So they weren't wiped off. They weren't wiped out. They were just transformed into this kind of mindless beasts. They look like um apes. So, Yautl was a human before and I think he's afraid because uh, he probably got transformed when he got tainted by the underworld's, uh, not magic, but energy. Um, and that's why he fears that now that Isel's been tainted too, something might happen to him. So, instead of reporting to uh, Tezcatlipoca, he reported to Quetzalcoatl because as Quetzalcoatl said uh, he's afraid of uh, Tezcatlipoca's reprobation. Uh, Tezcatlipoca might be angry that um, Yautl let Isel get tainted. That's what Yautl thinks. And now Yautl is afraid that Isel might even transform into something just like he did, maybe? You're going to need... Wait, wait, wait. He said, if you want to survive this, you're going to need to care about those children a little less. So there's a chance that Yautl dies and he's saying that he shouldn't really care that much about those children. As I said in the beginning, um, Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl, the light and the darkness, I don't know which one represents which one, but it's, uh, as I said, they're not like the good and the evil, they're like light and darkness, but who is this? Uh, is he tripping? I guess Isel is hallucinating. Hallucinating? Yo, what is King? King and Jun, I think. Is he injured? He's... 
like crying like a in, like an injured animal. Or maybe it isn't even June and it's a trap. Oh right, it's actually king. Okay, so maybe uh, King gets extremely anxious when June isn't around, like uh, Chiro and uh, Sora. I think they were Chiro and Sora, the main characters uh, in um, No Game No Life. They get extreme panic attacks when they get separated. So maybe these two are the same, when they're not together they freak out and get completely unable to do anything, or at least king. Yo, that was so clutch! Are those Brussels sprouts? <laughs> Yo, look at it. Look at them. It's a shit ton of Brussels sprouts, giant Brussels sprouts. But there's something watching them. Is it the gate guardian? It probably is. Is it a crab? Yeah, it's a crab. Did you see the, uh, the separation between the eyes and the giant uh, pins? The giant. Ah! I, I suddenly r forgot how to call the the arms of a crab. What they used to pinch? Fuck! How are those called now? So I was looking for a harder name, a, a weirder one, but it's actually called a crab claw. <laughs> or maybe Google's just tripping, but as of right now, I can't forget. I can't remember another name for uh, the. I th I'm thinking of the word pincer, but I doubt that's real. But you know, crab claws. So there was a crab claw, and there were. Yeah, fuck. So they are like crabs, right? Not exactly crabs, crustaceans. Yo, they can shoot acid. Oh, right. They. That's not acid that they can shoot, but they can throw us. Those guardians are so cool. Is that Jania? Janja? She's so strong though! And those weapons are insane, are those chakrams? Ah, oh, Yo, these... Gate Guardians are insane! Finally, they're using their ball for something. All right, they're drawn by the mark of the underworld. So clutch. Come on, Isel, bro. Wake up. Did you have a magic weapon? Are they going to fuse now into a... Yo... That's huge! Crash it! Yo... Ooh, it's spilled completely. Fuck, I don't want to see those creatures die, but I don't want to see Isel die either. Ooh. Did he get dehydrated? 
they even melted and fused with the floor. So there's another gate in Taniman or Taniman where they're heading now since she helped them. So there's the third gate in Taniman. Do they need to move all five of them at once? They will need one extra person then. Oh, I thought they were doing it at the same time, dog. All right. They still need one, uh, someone else. Can the knife become the fifth integrant? The fifth person? How can it still be alive when its innards are out by its mouth? But what I get from that is the knife is actually a living being. I wonder if that will come into play later. Two out of five gates out of commission. Three to go, boys and girls. You are now allowed to leave. You cleared the stage. You cleared the temple. Yatul is such a sundere. He plays tough. Yo. Imagine mocking a god's emissary. Is she okay? Maybe she's got a an infected injury? She seems feverish, if that word even exists. She seems to maybe have a little fever. Yo, though, is she some kind of werewolf or some? Sh is that a crocodile or a caiman? Or an iguana? Yo! Tell me she's actually a spy. Dog. She's actually a demon, I think. A shape-shifting demon. So, she helped them close the second gate. Does she plan on killing them when they're trying to close the third gate? Phew, I really don't know. Okay, that was a shocker. Uh, let me check if there's anything else in this episode and we'll get to the conclusions. Okay, so I checked and there isn't anything else in this episode. Uh, holy shit, so Jania, I think I heard the name Jania, but I only heard it once, so I probably messed the name up again, as I usually do, but Jania, so I was really liking her, and I still like her, the, her possibly being evil, at least as of now, doesn't necessarily mean I don't like her, I like a lot of evil characters in many many shows, just like Hisoka for example, but uh, I thought she was a cool girl and she seems to be actually either a shapeshifting demon or maybe a were demon, like a werewolf but with a demon, and um, also that demon that she became uh, resembled like a crocodile or maybe 
even uh, giant iguana like those we saw at the beginning of the episode I thought when she was uh, seeing those um, kill those 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 corpses at the beginning of the episode uh, she was tracking those demons but maybe she wasn't tracking the demons but maybe she was the one that killed them if she's actually evil or hell I have no idea of what's going to happen about her that's why I don't want to see any names or any info on the characters because that's the kind of shit I didn't want to know and thank god I wasn't spoiled on it it seems that the gates are actually in active volcanic zones because um, both uh, the first and the second gate were in volcanic areas I mean I think both were both were inside uh, anti-god obsidian temples or below those temples and uh, I mentioned it earlier but if you in case you don't know obsidian is a volcanic material it's not an actual it's just uh, it appears only around volcanoes so um, also uh, when those kind of crabs were uh, spitting acid uh, they weren't actually spitting a substance that they produced but they were spitting the fluids that were in the cavern and uh, the fact that it was acid uh, also confirms the theory that it's a volcanic area because mm, that's probably sulfuric, uh, sulfuric acid I think it's called in English uh, you know uh, given the huge amounts of sulfur around the volcanoes it's possible that that was um, acid actual acid and that's what they're trying to give us a hint that every gate must be located around maybe a, a volcano or an active volcanic area what else yeah the, those crabs so as i was saying before i didn't want to speak too much in case i said anything too damp and I looked too stupid in, on camera, but I thought they were crabs before they showed them because um, the distance between the eyes uh, in crabs and in crustaceans, especially in crabs, not in crustaceans, because crustaceans have every possible <laughs> eye shape. Uh, what? So uh, crabs have a very distinct eye to eye separation in admin anime at least uh, because every depiction I can actually remember right now of a crab in anime had that kind of ratio and also there was a crab claw on the floor that I saw later when I stopped the video to say those looks look uh, those eyes look like crab eyes I saw the crab claw and it was like okay dog <laughs> now that's too clear for you to miss it in case you're curious, if I remember to do this during editing, I will now uh, show you a picture of an animal that I think really resembles these uh, guardians in this second gate. Um, it's a fossil animal that lived in the sea a really long time ago, millions and millions of years ago, but... Uh, it just reminded me of it, so... That's it, yeah, <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, let me know if you guys see the correlation and think it might be uh, related. This animal is uh, a fossil animal and used to live on the seas, uh, as I said, millions of years ago. And maybe uh, they're trying to give us in this show a reference or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just, uh, an easter egg that not an easter egg i don't know how to give this like uh, maybe they were supposed to be extinct just like uh, in our world but uh, they were able to survive 
thanks to maybe those Mictlan, those underworld energies that emanated from the gate and let them kind of evolve into uh, crab guardians, maybe survive. Uh, yeah, that's basically it, I guess. That might be a theory and maybe the guardians are then local animals transformed into uh, monsters uh, thanks to those mixed land energies or maybe they're just um, mythological creatures uh, that I don't know of. In any case, that was basically it. Uh, this show is getting more and more hype as the episodes go on and now we can't wait for the next episode next week. So I actually learn if Janya is evil or if she's actually a good character. You know what I mean? Uh, a good character, a lawful character, not a, an evil character. Because I really like her and I would like her to be part of the team for longer, for a longer time. If they have to kill her in the end or if she said, if she decides to leave, given she's actually a demon. So many answer, so many questions to be answered. So thank you so much to everyone for visiting my channel and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace out.